Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Reno, Nevada at Interbike 2018. I think it's like 20,000 people. I'm trying to get the official number. I haven't been able to run it down yet. But feels big. Feels big. Feels A lot big. of stuff going on here. We came up because really the last mile vehicles, this, this amazing kind of revolution in small bat or small motors and big batteries and, and reliability and, and, and smart cities. And it's really going to play an important part in travel going forward. And we're excited to, uh, to be here on the floor. And the first company we came across, I'm obviously a big fan if you follow me on social is Future Motion. They make the one wheel. It's a crazy cool device. And we have Orion O'Neill, the sales manager from Future Motion. Orion, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So yeah. you said it's your first year at the show. We were kind of wondering kind of where you know your class of vehicles fits within kind of this whole bicycle world. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, generally speaking, we're, we generally exhibit in kind of more like outdoor retailer and outdoor apparel um, shows. But really, the cool thing about Interbike is, um, at the end of the day, bikes are like transportation, you know? Um, and really, our product, the One Wheel Plus, um, is really a last mile transportation tool. Um, so we decided to come to Interbike and see what's going on in the industry, and see how we can kind of fit into um, the new last mile of transportation. Right. And how's it been going? It's been awesome. The response has been really cool. Surprisingly, not a lot of people here know about us. Um, so it's always cool to see people who have never seen our product. Right, you know? right. <laughs> yeah. But, the, but what's interesting in terms of, of the bikes and, and the e part of it is mm -hmm. what we're seeing a lot of here is, is the outdoor. So now the e bike yeah. has gone beyond just the kind of the road bike or the city bike, the commuter oh. bike, and yeah. they're running them up and down the yeah. mountains out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, uh, I talk with a fair amount of people in the bike industry, um, and my understanding is that lots of the growth in mountain biking is coming from the e-bike, you know, and that's because it just lowers the barriers to entry. It's all about getting more people um, out there and able to enjoy the outdoors. Right. And we think with our board, it's kind of similar, you know. It has the utility to do commuting within the city, but the big tire also allows for us to kind of go out and explore trails, you know, beach, grass, gravel, all that stuff. Right, yeah. so I wonder if you guys are doing any work or you see anything on kind of the regulations, because it's, you know, the regs are always kind of behind yeah. the technology, and, and it's interesting, you go on a lot of trails, totally. uh, which are perfect for bikes, they're perfect for one wheels, they're perfect for e-bikes, yeah. but you see this, this sign, right, no motor vehicles, yeah. and I think most of the time, they're thinking motorcycles, they're thinking kind of traditional internal combustion motor vehicles, not necessarily necessarily this new class. So I wonder kind of from your point of view, yeah. are you guys working on that? What, what do you kind of see in terms of the acceptance of having these new age vehicles totally. in space? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, you know, um, mm -hmm. legislation is always very far behind kind of, you know, where the industry and innovation is going. Um, but we really think uh, that slowly but surely we're seeing more acceptance on, you know, Generally what we need to work on is the Forest Service and BLM. Um, and they're, they're starting to open dialogues with e-bike communities and we're actually talking with a few people in Tahoe. Um, and just having a more you know, tailored legislation towards kind of last mile commute and electric transportation that's not like a dirt bike or something right, like that. Right, right. Yeah. Because it's really, it's, it's, it's about disparity of, of, of speed. That's where, that's where dangerous things exactly. happen. But exactly. if you're on a mountain, tri a mountain trail or yeah. you know, you're running around, it shouldn't be a big issue. And actually, yeah. one wheels are unique because they, they work very well slow. I know. Uh, which a lot and of the, the vehicles cool thing don't. And the cool thing about one wheels on trails that lots of people don't know is the big tire actually packs the trails. So it actually can like repair some of the some of the ruts that bikes bikes put in. All right, that's a good reach. I like that. You're thinking ahead, you're giving yeah, yeah. this a gift for a get. You're yeah. giving we're helping yeah. you do trail maintenance if you ride your one wheel. I like it. So kind of so you guys just released this um, mm -hmm. this version a couple years ago. Yeah. Kickstarter company. Just yep. kind of give us a quick overview of what's happening with the company now. I think yeah. you said you caught up with your your back orders. You're you're getting into more retail locations. Kind of what's what's up with future motion? Yeah. So minute overview. You know we kickstarted back in early 2014. Um, first product came to market basically a year after that, which was the original One Wheel. Um, then we had the One Wheel Plus two years ago, and we just introduced the One Wheel Plus XR uh, at CES this past January. Um, and yeah, the growth has been pretty, pretty amazing. Um, we're now up to basically 400 retailers worldwide. Um, we have Europe, Australia, and North America. Um, and the response to the product has just been amazing. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. The thing that a lot of people don't know is you're actually riding on software, which yeah. is what I think is 
part of the unique uh, attributes of this of this vehicle. Right. I'm not a I'm not an engineer. Let me preface that. But my understanding is the hardest part and what makes our board so amazing is the actual programming, the firmware that tells the motor how to respond to those inputs. Right. You know. Right. That's like the the bread and butter. Right. Of, yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah. Ryan, thanks for uh, for spending a few minutes and congrats on the success. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. He's all right. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at Interbike 2018 in Reno, Nevada. Thanks for watching.